On this episode of the podcast, I have with me Claire Corthell, who is the product manager at Lyft. She has an interesting background. Prior to moving into this product manager role, she actually spent uh, time as a data scientist, machine learner. Now she sits on the other side. She has unique views on the relationship and what we possibly can do to improve the collaboration. And we're going to dive in and talk to her about her background. Thanks for being on, Claire. Thanks so much, Amir. Great to be here. Absolutely. So I did not do justice to your background. I hope you could maybe uh, set the stage with everyone in terms of you know who you are and how you got to where you're at this point. Sure, sure. It's all about narrative, right? So I have a kind of dual background in product-centric faculties and entrepreneurship. So coming out of Stanford Engineering, I went into engineering and design and ultimately discovered that as data science was taking off in 2013, 2012, that that was a better place to be if you wanted to understand your customers really well. So a product perspective brought me to that discipline. And I spent several years there working for companies in Europe, in the Valley, and then ultimately started a consultancy and worked with companies all over the world, various types, NGOs, large corporates, private companies on all different kinds of problems. And then what I discovered through that process and and what we can chat about more is that these companies were actually having difficulty deploying the technology that data science could bring and and the insights that data science could bring. And so I moved into the product world. And now I'm a product manager on the mapping team at Lyft. And we build the map that runs that ride-sharing company. Awesome. And I know you mentioned, I think, when we were talking um, last week about a little bit of your background. Some of the challenges, I guess, that would be maybe interesting just to hear about what you see right now at Lyft from just your day-to-day, right? So you start in product and now you have a different seat. So maybe and we'll work backwards a little bit and go into your history and kind of dive into your origin and then how you actually made the shift. But just in terms of what you're doing at Lyft, maybe can you set the stage of what you're working on and and what that complexity actually means? Yeah. So ride-sharing companies are primarily concerned with getting people from A to B, right? So you call a Lyft, you hope that it shows up right where you're standing, you have a great interaction with your driver, you get in and they take you right to the doorstep of the restaurant you're going to, your friend's house, whatever. All of the knowledge that is required to get the driver to the right place, to ensure that they take the right route, to make sure you avoid traffic and take the you know the best path there, to make sure that you actually show up in front of that business instead of a business with the same name all the way across the city, which has probably happened to everyone. All of that intelligence is driven by the map and the map data and the services that are built on top of it. So it's this core platform of the company that really drives how the product works. And uh, Lyft has about a five-year history with this function. Earlier on, the company, if you remember using Lyft in like 2014, it just had like one straight line between A and B. And it was like, we'll pick you up here and we'll drop you off there. You don't really need to know how that happens, right? And we used like geohash models and just said, You know, we machine learned it and said, I think it's going to take 14 minutes. I don't know how you're going to get there, but you will eventually. And plugged in some third party navigation tools to do that. And now the platform is maturing quite a lot. And what you learn being inside an organization like this is that the intelligence that's required to actually get the driver to the right spot and make sure that they're pulling out of traffic and you're able to identify them, all of that information is not something that your typical consumer platform would be focused on. So it's a really differentiated space. It's really interesting to experiment in because you're experimenting with real-world experiences that are very physical, unlike other problem spaces you might see in Silicon Valley, like advertising or information-centric products. So it's fun to work in data that really corresponds to the real world. And I guess the sheer volume when it comes to experimentation, that's got to be a very delicate area because obviously so many people use the product. Yes, yes. Fewer today, hopefully. Hopefully everyone's you know hanging out at home right now. But typically we have an incredible number of rides going on every day. And so we're constantly updating ETA models and routes and trying to understand what the best pickup spot is for the particular venue you're at. You know, It's not easy to get picked up at SFO, for example. It's not easy to get picked up at a large venue. So all of that experimentation takes place with real interactions and real people and we get real feedback. And it's a really kind of rich environment for data science and product to work in because you get a ton of lived experience detail back from your customer and you get to work with that as your input information. 
Yeah, I'd imagine the sheer volume and what you guys can do uh, should be fun. I guess let's take a step back and kind of touch on maybe a little bit early in your career. You mentioned you actually made the shift into product. You noticed that deploying the technology was a core issue. Talk about what that experience was at the time, what you were seeing and, and the driver behind that eventual push to get into product. Yeah. So I was running a consultancy for about two and a half years and we worked with all kinds of different companies. It, it was a really interesting point actually, because there wasn't like one brand of a consultancy that was doing a ton of work. I think Accenture and McKinsey and the large brands now have uh, data science functions that are established and, and they do more of this work for large corporates. But it was funny because I got calls from everybody and they just said, we don't know who to call to talk about data science and deploying this technology. We don't know how to run our teams. We don't know how it's useful. We don't know how to get started. We don't know what data to log. And so there was this kind of full spectrum, like wide aperture problem of how you even get started. And the place where I always started was, what is your goal? What are you trying to accomplish? What is the job that your product is doing for your user? And why do you think that deploying some sort of algorithmic method where you had something else or learning more about that customer through experimentation or developing more data synthetically will help you achieve that goal. And so through this kind of practice of having to build a playbook with consulting that enabled the customer to actually solve their problem, I started seeing how dire that need was for product to understand that there's this space of new technology and new capabilities, essentially like new, new tools in your tool chest that you can use to build products. And it's A, it's not scary. And B, it's much like other tools that you have. Engineering is a tool that product managers tend to understand well. Marketing is a tool that product managers understand well. Data science should also be a tool that you understand well. So I think there's a like an interesting gap there because... Both sides are really trying to do the right thing. And there's a connection that's now being built out as this function becomes more common as product managers learn more about techniques and best practices for experimentation, for algorithm design. And it was a really good time to move into product and be part of tying those two functions together and, and making sure that we can actually get these products to market. I think product managers are really empowered by understanding more of this. And so one of the interesting things that we ended up doing was a lot of education of product managers that we were working with on how to leverage those partners, how to build more effectively with them, who they needed to hire in that organization. And I think there's stuff in the background that has to happen with organizational design, with kind of interpolitical cross-functional negotiation to make that happen. But even just that basic education is really, really powerful. I mean, obviously, the, this is early on. There's a distinct gap. I mean, data science was more about the hard skill, right? You need the talent, you need the skill, you know, it has to enter the market. And then you were seeing the, I guess, as you were running a consulting company, you had to deliver solutions. Like you had to figure out requirements. There's a whole gamut before somebody's going to write you a check to start beginning, you know, pieces of you know, work, a statement of W. So were you seeing the early signs of, you know, the more business focus of a data scientist or were you seeing, that the product managers had to understand what data science could deliver. Is, is it both the same or is there a difference there? So the way I think about these two functions is that they're kind of like hand in glove, right? So product is really focused on defining the job that the product is doing. What is it trying to fulfill for the customer? And you know, you might be working in a platform business, serving internal customers. You might be right at the interface of a consumer app working with customers directly and, and trying to understand what kind of interfaces they need to accomplish some task. Product is really focused on defining that and then knowing whether the product is actually accomplishing that job, whether it's actually fulfilling that job. And data science is this incredibly critical function that should be paired really closely with product in answering whether that is happening in metric terms and building more of the conceptual frameworks to understand whether that's happening and then build more of the experimentation pipelines and protocols for measuring it. And I think there is an important distinction to be made here between what one of our scientists, uh, Mark Kuberty, calls the data science of risk and the data science of certainty. So data science of risk is about what I just described. How do you define these things that you don't necessarily understand already? 
how do you understand whether the customer is going to accomplish this task? How do you measure that? How do you measure whether it's better? How do you open up new hypotheses that you could build new products around and work with product to develop those strategic directions? The data science of certainty or the engineering of certainty, if you want to call it that, is this world of machine learning, algorithm design. It's more about building the thing that you already speculate is going to serve your customer and actually doing the work in that bucket. So there's this function that is much more strategic, much more focused on the product goals. And there's a function that's much more focused on the execution of the product as it's been defined and discovered. So if you think about those two worlds, I think data science in the uh, strategic format on that risk side has been relatively well-defined in the past. And I think there's different like functions that have fulfilled that. Strategy has always been a part of corporations since you know the 60s. And it's this function that has done more of this work, but wasn't necessarily called data science. Algorithm design and more of this large-scale engineering, parallelized systems, all of that was called engineering for a long time. Some of that is now called data science. And so I think we're bringing things under this umbrella where there are some like distinctions you can make between them. You know, at some point you make the transition, right? So you are a data scientist, you're a consulting company, you're delivering, you're seeing this gap, you become a product manager. What happens to the data science side? So I mean, just so maybe walk us through. I mean, if anyone is actually thinking about moving into product from a similar background, when you do actually take the role of product manager and you're putting a different, you know, hat on formally, what happens to the other side for you? You know, obviously you were transitioning, but you you have a background and experience in product just through the consulting delivery that you were doing. But obviously now you're not day to day data scientist. You're you're responsible for a different uh, focus of what needs to be delivered. How do you, I guess, you know, start leaving one behind and picking up the other more and more? Yeah. So my path here was through consulting, as as I described, and I think what was really satisfying about consulting was that you could play either side of the coin there. And a lot of the work blended together. So just understanding the scope of work and the problem as it needed to be defined with the customer and working through that with them. If you're in that process, it's a lot easier to develop the solution because you're really familiar with the problem already. I think in a company, typically, there's a more discreet handoff there where product managers are saying, here are the problems that our different personas have. How do we experiment around this thing and that thing? And they bring that to their team and start working through different solution spaces and, and how you can approach those things. And so you're really sitting at the like front half of your problem space. However, in the data science seat, you're always working to understand the problem so that you can solve it. So I think it's a matter of shifting your perspective. And maybe the most critical kind of shift that I've had to make, and I think that product managers or people moving into product management have to make, is toward narratives and really framing things in an understandable light for other stakeholders. And it's really a communication-centric function. So you're taking all of this data and all of these really technical aspects of the product that you're building and what you understand about it and what you understand about your customers and turning that into a narrative that can be understood by the CTO, by your director, whoever that audience is. And that's a really powerful position to be in because if you understand the technology and if you're coming from data science and moving into product, you can tell a more powerful story because you understand all of the dimensions of it. If you're a product manager who doesn't understand the technology, you probably have to spend a lot of time sitting with that data scientist, working through different narratives and saying, like, does this make sense? Does that make sense? Instead of ideating with them. And so I think it's pretty interesting because there's all of these like data products, <laughs> in a sense, that feed that narrative. Like, how do you take confidence intervals and describe them in some sort of like Lehman framework to help? an audience understand that you have a more definite understanding of like an ETA, for example, than just a point estimate. How do you use that as a tool in your narrative to say, most of the time we predict this and you know, 50% of the time we predict only one minute over and 50% of the time, the other 50%, we predict like two seconds under. And so you know, our skew is in this direction. Just telling a story like that can be very complicated for someone who's not as well-versed in these 
discipline. So I think it's a really powerful move to make. I think there's more people that need to move from data science into product management. And because it's such an like under understood or misunderstood function on the product side, it's a lot easier to find areas of impact and and bring them to market literally and figuratively as a product manager. Maybe a good question to kind of piggyback off of that is so you've taken this step obviously into the product world and you know obviously you have a unique uh, vantage point of of seeing you know both sides now obviously you must see some gaps in terms of the relationship so someone who doesn't have the data science background who's working in product and then somebody who's in data science who's never really decided to get into the product world really you know they don't understand they work with each other obviously but they don't really understand each other's pain what are some of the common gaps that you see in terms of just that overall relationship? Well, everyone's rooted in their own function, right? And you are invested in your function because you chose to be in it, you have the skills to be in it, and you you think about things from that perspective. And you probably need something different from other functions than they need from you. And there's kind of a transaction there. So it's always better if it's a conversation where you innately understand each other. The thing that I see science struggling with the most in business is understanding that the function is needs to communicate about the business value that's coming from the investments that are made in science. How do you take that and translate it into something that's either a narrative or close to a narrative that describes the business impact? If you're not doing that, it's really hard to justify further investment. And there's some kind of like best practices and tricks that you can maybe not tricks, but like (laughs) methods, let's say, that you can use to break down problem spaces and say, hey, if we take a bite out of this really big problem and we make a little bit of headway and then we evaluate based on this impact to the product, you'll see that this is actually really valuable and you'll give us more runway to experiment and build in this direction. And being able to communicate in the terms of the business to the product manager is crucial. On the product management side, as I was describing before, being able to leverage the artifacts and the product that comes out of data science is crucial to being able to get that stuff to market. It's almost like if you're a carpenter and you have this big bag of tools and you look at it and you say, great, I have a chisel and a hammer and like a file and all of these other things. And all I can do is use the hammer. I'm just going to use the hammer. And People say, like, why do your chairs look like a bunch of two by fours nailed together? It's because you only know how to use a hammer, right? (laughs) So, how do you take all of these other tools and use them well to drive the product forward and use them at the right point in time? I think that's really the question on the product side. So, I think you see some of the flashier stuff be overused on the product side. Like, how do we use machine learning for everything? Machine learning is probably very overused right now. There's a a lack of understanding that comes from optimizing before you have done experimentation to understand the mechanics of what is happening behind your systems. Like, why is the ETA higher or lower than the actual? What did that come from? Was there more traffic? Was there less traffic? Was there a road in the map that didn't exist? Like, these are the types of questions that we ask in the mapping world or in the mapping team at Lyft. But how do you actually understand what's going on so that once you do start optimizing, you're not completely blind to it? And I think the risk there, and perhaps this is a risk that both functions fall prey to, the overuse of machine learning in particular, but how do you understand the problem enough so that if you are optimizing on top of it and something fundamental changes, that you aren't fragile to that? For example, what if everybody stays home for six months? <laughs> or did you machine learn for this particular system for four years and now you don't understand how your customers were behaving, how the product was doing the job or not doing the job for them? And all you know is the hyperparameters for this particular optimization. That's not going to help you make product decisions and uh, react to the world as it's changing. So that's a really crucial balance to strike between optimizing and understanding. And that's where I think that boundary between that data science of risk and the science of certainty comes, which things fall on which side. What are you actually building and what do you need to understand more? Absolutely. I guess when it comes to you in particular, I was just thinking, you know, you obviously understand 
the world of a data scientist really well. So I guess in terms of your personal view, when you're collaborating with the data science team at Lyft, how do you kind of work within that parameter? Because like, I'm sure you might get some thoughts in your mind, you want to communicate it, but you realize you know, you're not necessarily on that team, but you're collaborating. How's that dynamic work with somebody with your kind of unique skill set? There's always a lot of excitement in a room where you both understand what's possible, right? And so it's a lot harder for a data scientist to get excited if they're working with a product manager who has never seen this technology before. They have to you know, explain everything from the ground up. It's going to take some time for that person to really start to understand what those tools are helpful for and how they can apply them. But if somebody comes in the room and says, like, I've done this before. I used to sit in your seat. How do we make this happen? It's a lot easier to move quickly. It's a lot easier to build trust. And it's been really great for me moving into the seat because I feel like my job is to help deploy the skills, technology, and business value that comes from this function on the product side from data science through the product function, right? So it's almost like we've had a locker to get these things to market. And I'm one of the people that can help do that. And this was true of my past couple positions as a product manager where I, I really got to sit with analysts and say, like, what are you seeing? How do we dig in the data? And I got to look at you know, the fine-grained data models of various things that were being worked on and understand how that data was being created and then look at the algorithmic systems they were building or the experiments they were running. And because I could understand every step of that, there was more kind of creative brainstorming that can happen all throughout those pipelines. There's more creative brainstorming that I could bring them into in the product side even specifically like meetings that I could pull them into that otherwise product managers wouldn't think to bring their data scientists to. But I think a lot of that can be resolved by really pairing closely with a product manager and a data scientist. They're kind of two sides of the same coin. The product manager is, as I described, really concerned with how you define the jobs that the product needs to do and understanding the customer and being really attached to the customer's context. And if those customers are internal, like working with them really closely. I'm a platform PM, so I work with internal customers. I usually talk to people who are like the same person every time as opposed to like talking to a driver, which is a different focus group every time. How do I stay attached to those customers? And the data scientist is really concerned with how do we take all of these assertions that the product manager is making and all of their conviction and turn it into something that's not just PM conviction and unexcited PM, but something that we can back up with data and validate. And so if you're both in the room, when you see the problems being defined, when you're sitting with customers, when you're working with the engineering team, you can bring both of those viewpoints to bear. I think that's one of the kind of best side effects of moving from that function into product. Like I know that that person needs to come with me. And I know that that person needs to have access to all of this context so that they can solve problems in the best way possible for the business. It sounds like that's an immense advantage to have. You know, I, I asked this question, I think I'm kind of curious to go back to it and I'll rephrase it so maybe we'll view it differently. Is So when you see the evolution of maybe data science or product management, who's going to shift to learn a little bit more about the other side more? Meaning do the product managers need to get more technical? Obviously, they won't be data scientists, but get more technical or will the data scientists become more business-driven looking for the problem to solve? To take this back to the analogy of tools, I think it's much more important for, say, a product manager to see a chisel, understand what the chisel is for, use it a couple times, talk to a couple people about it, have some touch with it. And it's probably less important that they use it every day because now you know what a chisel does and you know when it's probably going to be used. But it's still crucial that you understand that in some sort of instinctive tacit way. And I'm a big believer in tacit knowledge and tacit practice. So... I think a lot of people uh, query product managers on whether they can write SQL. <laughs> you know, I could take it or leave it in terms of whether you specifically know Postgres, fine, but it's helpful to spend some time in like a boot camp and understanding these things if you don't already have those skills. There are boot camps for product managers now, and I think that type of scaling is really crucial. I suspect that in 10 years, you won't find a product manager who doesn't understand experimentation. It's just, it's going to be part of the core skill set. 
And I think that transition is already happening. Uh, you see this in business schools. Like a lot of product management comes out of business school now. It used to come out of engineering schools. I came out of an engineering school because I wanted to get into product. Ultimately, that was the path at that point. But now people go through business school. They learn about you know like operations management, business frameworks, and data science. It's part of the curriculum. So I think it's going to become standard and we are going to move closer to data science. But it's also crucial for data science to continue improving the narrative perspective and demonstrating its value. I do think there is a failure to launch for data science in a lot of companies where you know, people say, hey, we've been creating a lot of really important, valuable things and the company just doesn't recognize it. That's probably not a failure of your function or the projects you've been working on. It's probably a failure of the narrative and framing things in terms of the business value that it brings. And data science got kind of a blank check in some ways for a couple of years while things were shiny and everybody decided to hire a chief data officer. And that was a big thing for a while. And then two years after that, you saw those people transition to something else because it was more important to write the blank check and see what came out of it than to try and integrate that with the business and really describe why this function is important, how it's going to be impactful, and how it's going to work day to day with all of the other functions and be seated in the hierarchy and positions of power that are necessary for you to like get resources, get buy-in, build your function, partner with other organizations, have cloud. And that just takes a long time for those types of business changes to happen. But I think it is happening. And I, I think both of the functions are adapting and well on their way to making this a reality. Do you think some of that also ties into how data science and product you know, potentially are used at a particular company? So I guess in the case of data science, if it's not a core part of their business in terms of taking data and trying to find ways to you know, affect the P&L, and it's more of an ancillary function to get provide insight to another team versus, I mean, I guess, you know, Lyft's case. I mean, you guys need to have that map be pretty accurate because if somebody is frustrated, they're going to go to another ride-sharing app and you guys don't want to lose that customer. So do you see potentially how the functions are used being an impact in terms of you know, how delivery is viewed potentially? Certainly, certainly. There's different perspectives on the organizational design. And I used to have stronger opinions about this to date. I don't have as strong opinions. I think it's more important that data science figure out where their seat at the table should be positioned and how to advocate for that. And I think having upper level management leadership is really crucial for enabling that design of the organization below. Some companies do it in the centralized fashion where they have kind of consultative core functions. Lyft has both. It has embedded and core functions. And I think that's a pretty common pattern for large corporations. As a, an individual product manager, it's really important for me to have someone embedded with me, like I was describing, like somebody who's actually coming to these meetings with me because they need to have the deep context of the problem and the context of the investments that we're going to be able to make. And that is much more valuable to me as a PM. What's valuable to the core of the business and the data science function might be different. So perhaps you are replatforming the entire company so that you can experiment with things that you were never able to experiment with before. And so you have to like, you know, replatform all the logs and the data systems and everything. And that's like a partnership between science and engineering. That could be something that requires significant centralization and really technical data-focused PMs and data science functions that are somewhat consultative because they're pulling together this platform effort. I think it really depends. It really depends. Interesting. One final question, because I think this could be a unique perspective for if someone's in data science, machine learning, and they have a you know, desire to come into the product world. Is there something someone can do to help make that transition? I mean, are there things they should go, should go learn? Is it just you know trial by fire? How does one you know, potentially make that switch? Uh, kind of, you did it naturally because obviously you had some positives in, in what you want to do from the you know, outset. But if somebody else who's looking to make that shift, where do they start? Great question. It's funny because I was trying to answer this question for data science in uh, 2013, which is when I drafted the open source data science masters. And Perhaps there's a need for an open source product management track as well. But I think 
there's a ton of really well established material out there from business schools, from manufacturing, from operations research. Operations research is actually where I got my introduction to data science, or what I think you could call the precursor to data science. And that is really an area where the two come together quite nicely. Like, frankly, at Lyft today, we use a lot of operations research and like manufacturing techniques to build the core of that business. And so it's not too different. It depends on what type of products you're working on. If you're looking to be focused on experience, having relevant background and really starting to talk to people who are working on like end consumer features and optimizing those things or building them anew is a helpful way to understand whether that's a seat you want to sit in. There's a lot of publication kind of in the blogosphere about that role. More of the platform stuff is elusive and perhaps comes from, again, operations research and more of those areas. So I've found it really difficult to find detail on platform PM because it's just it's a small core of these businesses and it's not typically published externally. There's a lot of tacit practice and people who have been in it for a long time. And so I've used informational interviews, like you know, asking people if you can talk with them about their job and what it entails and what they would recommend. It's kind of an old school way of going about learning about a career, but it works and like people want to say yes and they want to help with their expertise. So it's worth a shot. And there's some kind of classic product management books out there that cover basic frameworks and ways to think about business and things like that. Any of the books about OKRs are really great to read because most companies use OKRs to manage their P&Ls from the top down. And that's a way of communicating that is really crucial and core to the skill set of a product manager. I think it's also helpful from the data science side to read about OKRs and really understand them more deeply if you don't already use that within your business because it will help you do more of that communication that I was describing earlier with other functions to describe how your output is improving the business and to speak in the same language. So that's a really useful thing to invest in. I'd say check around the internet. There's probably somebody who's put up some of the free materials from some of these boot camps. There are schools on product management as well. I haven't been through any of them, so I don't have any specific reviews there. That sounds like great advice. And... Um... I think you have a very unique background, very unique perspective on how these two worlds complement each other and and potentially the you know the future of how they can kind of improve relationships and and how they are connected at the hip in reality. So definitely appreciate you exploring uh, the topic with us. I, I thank you very much. Thanks for the chat, Amir. Absolutely. And if someone wants to reach out to you, uh, follow up question about getting into product or anything you discuss, what's your preferred avenue? I'm quite reachable on Twitter. Claire Corthell is my handle. So you can find me there. Okay. We'll definitely include that in the show notes. Again, thank you very much for being on. And um, if you're listening out there, definitely love some feedback on the podcast. Uh, reach out to Claire if you have any questions. And if there are other topics you want to hear, let us know. Uh, always looking for new ideas and new angles to kind of bring value to the audience. Please subscribe and leave us a review. Let us know how we're doing. Until next week. Thanks.